Batman the Animated Series really changed the way people were making animated drama. This was not the usual fare for kids' entertainment. We weren't just reinventing Batman. We were, all, Batman's villain gallery was all being reinvented. Batman is my favorite superhero, and at this point, it's not really a secret. Over the years, there's been a lot of people to don the old cape and cowl, and I honestly love them all for different reasons. They all hold a special place in my heart, except for he who shall not be named. Batman is DC's bread and butter, so you won't ever visit a comic book store and not be able to find a Batman comic. There's a ton of Batman games, and every year you hear about a new Batman-related movie being in development. Hell, we have three different versions of Batman running around in the DCEU right now. But out of all the people to take up the mantle, it's only been a few to get out from under the large shadow cast by Kevin Conroy's iconic performance in Batman the Animated Series. But why? Why is this kid's show still considered to be one of the best incarnations of the character by so many even 30 years later? Well, there's a hundred different ways I could answer that question, but I'm gonna do my best to break it into three. Part one, respecting the audience. Anytime I see criticisms of a superhero show, I always see a few people in the comments saying, the reason these shows are the way they are is because superhero shows are written for kids. And every time I hear that lame excuse, I point them right into the direction of Batman the Animated Series. This children's show that aired on Fox Kids cares about its source material more seriously than 75% of the superhero shows of today. It's enjoyable from childhood all the way to adulthood because it never talks down to its audience. It really did tackle a lot of intense topics like depression, pride, also mental illness and death. It really touched a lot of themes that were very adult in nature and one episode that stuck with me throughout these years was one called Lock Up. The episode opens up to a terrified scarecrow. He's been escaping jail because one of the guards is abusing the inmates. Even as an adult, seeing that look that the guard gives Harley Quinn in the courtroom when she's supposed to testify against him gives me chills. Harley Quinn has been shown to show no fear and she's completely shook when she's asked to testify against the guard. But it's not just her, all the villains are. They actually deny that he did anything wrong to them at first. But eventually all the villains build up enough courage to testify against him. This sends the guard into a rage and he ends up becoming a vigilante later into the episode. This guy brutally abuses anyone who breaks any sort of law. He goes as far as kidnapping government officials and even locking them up with no trial. He approaches Batman to team up to get rid of all the crime in Gotham. In his mind, him and Batman are one and the same, but their ideologies couldn't be any more different. At the end of the day, Batman doesn't really want to hurt people. No matter how messed up they are, he really does want to help them. And this guard simply wants to punish people and cause pain. And on top of that, Batman almost dies in this episode. I remember being super on edge watching this episode as a kid. So in just 22 minutes of runtime, we get a message about the abuse of power, how flawed the prison system can be, and they had the balls to present both sides of the argument in a kid's show. So I don't ever want to see a comment excusing poor writing because superhero shows are made for kids. Part two, deeper than the surface. As much as I used to love watching the Adam West reruns as a kid, it's pretty clear they didn't take their source material too seriously. It was a campy live action version of a Saturday morning cartoon. It was fun, but it wasn't a real take on the Cape Crusader from the comics. Years later, the Michael Keaton version of the character came out and a lot of people really loved this darker, grittier take on the character. The older comic book fans who weren't happy with how campy Batman had become in mainstream media finally had something they could enjoy. Batman Returns was actually the first piece of Batman content I'd ever watched. I don't really care for Batman 89 too much, but I vividly remember breaking the VHS of Batman Returns because I watched it so much. I often go back to the movie Batman Returns and I still love it to this day. But watching now as an adult and someone who now reads comic books, this version doesn't really get into what I personally consider the most important aspect of the character, and that's his psyche. Michael Keaton's performance is amazing, but it wasn't much duality between Bruce Wayne and Batman. We also don't really know much about this version. Like what makes this Batman tick? What are his personal goals and aspirations? And outside of revenge, why does he do what he does? And believe me, this is no hate to the Keaton version of the character. Because with all that being said, without that version of the character, we probably would have never gotten Batman the animated series. The series took the dark gothic tone of the Burton verse and really brought it to life. Some elements of the city like the cars and the way people dress sometimes feel like it's set in the 50s. But in this universe, there are a lot of modern references and a lot of futuristic technology. And those elements of that show have pretty much been used in every iteration of Batman that came after. And my favorite example of taking a deeper dive into Batman's psychology in this show is the episode entitled I Am The Knight. 
Batman really faces some of his toughest times that he faces in the series in this episode. It's the haunting anniversary of his parents' death, and my boy Batman is really having a hard time. Every year to celebrate his parents, Bruce takes roses to the place where his parents were killed. And in this episode, somebody steps on those flowers and he goes into sort of an existential crisis. And to add some fuel to the fire, Officer Gordon has been shot this episode. Batman is feeling a little helpless. He couldn't protect him and he's really thinking about giving up the cape and cow. Bruce is pretty depressed for nearly the entire runtime of this episode. He eventually sucks it up to save Gordon before being killed while he was at the hospital. And he kind of snaps out of that funk. Once again, I gotta reiterate, this is a kid's show. See, Bruce Wayne in the comics is a very flawed person, and Batman the Animated Series wasn't afraid to show that. Some episodes he would be completely in the wrong, and sometimes he would just be a flat-out, insensitive jerk to his protégés. The show wasn't afraid to be raw and real with its subject matter. So you blend that with a charming Bruce Wayne, a ton of sympathetic villains who can shift from being wacky to scary and menacing at the drop of a hat, a godlike musical score, and a ton of likable side characters, and you got a classic on your hands. The third and final part is understanding mythos. As much as I love the Nolan films, I feel like the realistic tone takes away one of my favorite aspects of Batman. Don't get me wrong, the Nolan movies are some of my favorite films of all times, but it's just a little something missing. See, Batman is just a man, but he's not really supposed to feel like one if that makes sense. He's a creature of the night trained by assassin. He's supposed to feel really mythical and almost inhuman at times. I think Nolan captured that perfectly in Batman Begins, but he kind of dropped that aspect as the trilogy went on. Like, Bell looks cool, but the way he moves, the way he fights, and the way the movie is shot doesn't really give me that mythical, mystical, inhuman vibe. The punches and counters are average speed, the fight choreography is pretty basic, and he kind of just looks like a dude in a Batman suit sometimes. And yes, guys, I understand that's what he was going for, but I prefer my Batman to be a little more agile, a little more athletic, and have a bit of a deeper bag of fighting styles. And on top of that, Batman is known for being the world's greatest detective. Name one live action movie where you actually felt that to be true. There wasn't much of any detective work in the Burton verse. We saw a glimpse of it with Val Kilmer, but they didn't really go into depth with it. And if any one of y'all dare say George Clooney, I will block you faster than you can say bat nipples. Bell's Batman was smart, but he was always a little bit too late to the party in the Nolan trilogy. I felt the detective work was a step in the right direction with Batfleck, but every movie we've seen Ben Affleck in has been an ensemble flick, but we haven't really got to take a deep dive into that part of his skill set because he never had a solo movie. The Batman the Animated Series was able to capture the essence of Batman and his mythos, along with the Bruce Wayne duality while putting his detective work at full display. All the episodes made sure to showcase these things because they really genuinely care about the source material. With that being said, I'm not opposed to directors changing the source material if it makes sense for the world that they're presenting, which is why I don't have a huge problem with Affleck's Batman killing or with Nolan's Batman fighting skills being rooted in realism. But at the end of the day, we're talking about a comic book character, a rich dude that has billions of dollars, had the time to master hundreds of fighting styles before the age of 30, and also is a book smart genius and a ladies man. So when you root him too much in reality, I feel it takes a little bit away from his best traits. In Batman the Animated Series, he was always the smartest in the room, but not to an unrealistic degree. He's so smart that sometimes it would lead him to be a little bit overly confident and sometimes allow the villains to get a leg up on him. And every villain he comes across challenges a very specific weakness that he has to overcome. And yes, guys, I understand it's a little bit unfair to compare a TV show with multiple seasons to movies who only have a couple of hours to flesh all these things out. But even the movies that are set in this same continuity, like Batman Mask of the Phantasm and Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, still do these things a lot better than any live action version I've ever seen. And those three reasons are why I think this kids TV show has continued to be the best version of the Cape Crusader put to screen. The only thing that really comes close in my opinion is the Batman Arkham games, where Batman and Joker are ironically voiced by the same actors that voiced them in the animated series. I know some of y'all watching are a little bit younger, so you may have not come up with this show and it may not have as much significance to you, and I get that. But if you have seen Batman the Animated Series, let me know down in the comments what were some of your favorite episodes or moments that you remember. What are some of your favorite things about the show? And if you don't like Batman the Animated Series, or you don't think it's the best version of the character, let me know down in the comments why. Let's just nerd out and talk about Batman in general, but specifically 
Batman the Animated Series. But anyways, y'all, I appreciate y'all for tuning into this video once again. My name is Eddie. This is Nerdy Before It Was Cool, and I'm out. <laughs>